Hi guys, Danny here. In the comments to one of my videos, someone asked a question about mod integration and interaction and also about automation. So uh, I decided to make a small video covering those topics. Uh, it's not going to be a long video, there's just only a few things I want to cover, but let's get started. I'll start off with ethanol production. Ethanol is used in nearly all of the mid-tier power generation machines and it is also used in things like jetpack so it is very important and to produce the ethanol I just have this little setup here I have Billcraft pipes that is going to be pumping ingredients out of this chest inside of this fermenter and I have water inside of the fermenter using these flue ducts and the Accurus accumulator. All I need to do is go here, throw in some sugar and some dirt. Note you can automate this in any way you want. Uh, you can have quarries from Billcraft getting dirt from somewhere and put them inside this chest. You can have like an automatic crafting table that's making sugar and putting it inside of this chest and all that will be pumped inside this fermenter and all you need to do is give it some water like I said I'm just using this Accurus accumulator and then as you can see the yeast is made which is then passed on using these pipes from Billcraft onto this other fermenter now to automate the fermenter all you need to do is give it a redstone signal as you can see it says target yeast but here the target is sludge. All you need to do is flick the switch. I'll just let this yeast pass and then I'll do it. Okay, flick the switch. Target is yeast. Flick the switch again. Target is sludge. So as you can see, when the target was yeast, the yeast that was being pumped from this fermenter was thrown out. That's why I was so wary to put it in the other stage. So let's see if I can put this back. Okay, I can't. Well, eh, I'll just put, throw it in here. And you can do the same thing, uh, throwing in the plant materials, maybe from a wood farm that you get from different mods. You can make a wood farm in any way you want, maybe even just using the woodcutter from Project Craft itself. And pump the saplings or the leaves or whatever you want through another pipe from any direction you want just inside the machine I'm just gonna do it by hand there you go the sludge is being made really fast as well and then all you really need is more of these pipes uh, I should probably have some here with an extraction pipe and then I'll just get myself a redstone engine just stick it onto it like that like that give it a redstone signal and the machine starts and there you go and if I put a chest there which I probably should do like that now the sludge is going to be thrown into that there you go or you could just do this even better get yourself a furnace Whoops. now I haven't tested this out but they should work in theory, so here I go. Did it work? Okay, it didn't. Which is unfortunate. Put it back to the chest. Maybe it doesn't work with the vanilla, my, uh, vanilla furnace, but it might work with furnaces from different mods. Let's see if I actually have any of those. Redstone furnace, that might work. Let's try the redstone furnace. This should work. I'll just take the sludge out. Break this chest. Redstone furnace there. It's in the in mode, so yeah, I have I see no reason why this shouldn't work. Throw in some more sugar. I already have like a piece of dirt there, six pieces, which is fine. 
so it doesn't work with the vanilla furnace but it should work with this is it being made I don't know okay it is I'll be back in a second after I test something out so looking back inside of the furnace we can see that the sludge is inside of the furnace also after a bit of testing I realized that it didn't go inside of the vanilla furnace mostly because of my own uh, lack of knowledge about Billcraft and Billcraft interaction with vanilla machines rather than it actually not working so all I need to do is put a furnace there stone transport pipe there and this should start working so let me get just get myself some coal to actually do some proper automation throw some coal in there now let's see I'll just throw in some what does it need just some sugar okay a bit of sugar like so whoops so what I realized is um, after a bit of testing there which I destroyed it wasn't working because it has to be pumped from the top I remembered that after I said it doesn't work so yeah a little bit of mistake on my part it does indeed work and if you wanted to do this even better you could attach a friction heater to the furnace and after you attach the friction heater to the furnace, if you watched one of my videos, the tutorials, you should see that the furnace works incredibly fast. And there you go. The sludge goes inside of the furnace and now it's melting into ethanol. So yeah, all I need to do is add a friction heater to the furnace behind it and the ethanol will be produced a lot faster. Or you can just have this little setup. You can do anything you want, really. I'm just trying to show a little example here. And this will keep working, and because I have these industrial coils, you can replace them with whatever engines you want, or anything you want. Uh, and yeah, it'll just work like this. And then all you need to do is take it out of the furnace, or any machine that actually works like a furnace. Uh, if you had an AE system, you could you know take you could put it inside of the AE system and send it along tubes or whatever you want into the different engines so I decided to build the next part as well just out of curiosity more than anything else uh, I knew it would work in theory but here it is in practice I guess I just have a wooden pipe pumping the ethanol out at the bottom of the furnace connected by these stone transfer pipes directly inside of this gasoline engine which you can see is producing energy let me just right click with the angular transducer and it is and as long as this keeps on sending in the stuff um, the only problem with just using one chest here is it's gonna go through the sugar before it goes through the dirt but if you had it connected to two pipes maybe another pipe going like that connected to another chest that's sending in the sugar one connecting uh, one sending in the dirt um, this goes, creates the sludge, goes inside of the furnace, creates the ethanol, which travels to the gasoline engine, just like that. Um, obviously, you can make this a lot more compact, but it is possible to do it, which was the question. So, yeah, that is the automation for the ethanol. And next we have uh, making lava using the rock melter. Uh, now the rock melter is going to be very handy if you have different machines from other mods. Or even different machines in Rotorcraft. For example, there's a furnace that requires you to pump a lot of lava in it. And it can smelt a lot of items at the same time. Or engines from other mods, like I said, that require lava and they produce energy. Admittedly, I'm using netherrack right now. So, you know... Uh, the only time you would have netherrack but not lava is if you weren't using any ender tanks or uh, some sort of interdimensional pipes or some sort of rail system and you didn't want to use it uh, you also have this system uh, you can actually use any kind of rock in this you can use cobblestone or something like that but I'm just using netherrack right now uh, if you did use cobblestone you wouldn't get that much lava as it says here and the nether rack itself takes around seven or eight seconds each to get melted down into lava which is not that much uh, because you can have multiple rock melters and 
you can have the lava being pumped out of them into different engines or anything you like really um, I'm just using netherrack now and it is producing a lot of lava as you can see here all this was produced using the netherrack I used like two stacks to produce this much 64, 12, well more than two more than two stacks actually um, 64, 120, around three stacks I guess now the good thing about the rock melter is the speed at which it melts the rock whatever rock you have goes up depending on how much power you put inside of it so if you just increase the amount of power being put inside of the rock melter the amount of lava you get out uh, the speed increases as well so let me just destroy this I should have an industrial coil with me I have one of those with me all the time there you go and I just put one down there to output mode get a lever and put the speed and the torque to something a bit ridiculous just to see okay let's see if that's ridiculous enough the wrong direction oops right output is it going faster it is going faster so as you can see the rate at which the netherrack is being melted went up and if I increase it even more I don't want to increase it too much. I don't want all the netherrack to be gone before I look into it. And there you go. And this is how fast the lava is being produced. Like I said, lava production is one bucket per netherrack. So at this rate, I'm producing more than a bucket every second. Okay, it's slowed down now. That's because the rock melter is full. Um, the pipes are not pulling out the liquid fast enough. If I had um, the pipes from the rotary craft, it should work faster. Liquid pipe. There you go. Now is this being pumped in? And it is. Okay, it's completely full. So you guys probably saw how quickly that got full. And yeah, that's just the point I'm trying to make, which is the rock melter, or at least producing lava using the rock melter is really handy if you throw in a lot of power. And yeah, that is the lava production using the rock melter and a few other mods. Now, if you were looking through the book while I was covering the mods, you probably noticed that I didn't cover a lot of the machines like the magnetostatic engine which was actually just added recently. Reika adds a lot of uh, machines um, and a lot of new updates so you should probably check it every couple of weeks in fact. Uh, I hadn't checked it for two weeks and there were already like five updates so uh, it's really good to check up on the updates for Rotarycraft uh, as often as possible. But let's see what else is there. Uh, the, the rotational dynamo, uh, the electric generator, and s machines like that. Basically, they're machines that convert power from one mod into another. I'm not going to be showing all of them because I don't even have all of the mods uh, that you can convert power from and to. But I am going to show the one that I use most often, and that is the redstone flux. Okay, the power here was just now full or is it just me anyways I need to put in a new cell there just to show that it does actually work the cells being from thermal expansion there you go basically this is the rotational dynamo which converts shaft power into redstone flux and I'm using the AC electric engine right now because like I've said many times it's almost like you're outputting free energy because all you need is a redstone clock 
which is from Expanded Redstone, another one of Rekha's uh, mods. And you just need a shaft core. And if you watch one of my videos, you can see that the shaft core lasts quite a bit of time. So, like I said, it's almost like free energy. I consider it to be free energy. And that just goes inside of the rotational dynamo, which converts it into redstone flux. Now we can see the rate at which it's being generated. There you go. The AC electric engine is outputting at 40 average kilowatts. And the rotational dynamo is generating around 5 redstone flux per tick average. So yeah, that's the conversion. And I'm just using some redstone energy conduits to pump it inside of this Let's redstone um, leadstone energy cell. And yeah, it's just really that simple. And there are other ones as well. Uh, I named a few just there. But let me see if I can find more of them. You can have the, new, the pneumatic engine which converts pressurized air from Billcraft conductive pipes into shaft power so this is from Billcraft power which is MJ's to shaft power there is the electric motor which converts volts which I think is from there you go mechanism into shaft power there is the fuel powered engine which is not really conversion because it requires fuel but it does require another mod in this case Billcraft again uh, and you can use the fuel from that mod and you can produce shaft power with it quite a lot of shaft power too let's see you also have the magnetostatic engine which accumulates RF provided to it and outputs torque so it turns RF into shaft power and uh, there are more but I might have covered them all no I have not here is the air compressor that you use to convert shaft power into Billcraft power and the electric generator which you need to convert shaft power into uh, the mechanism power volts and the rotational dynamo which I just showed there and different machines like that actually I think those are all the machines but yeah so rotary craft is integrated uh, very well with the other mods so if you wanted to use them along inside each other then you can however in my opinion rotary craft has machines that cover all of the things that you can do in those mods um, if you get the hang of it that is uh, there is a learning curve and uh, after the initial learning where you actually know how to use the different machines things get really easy and you can produce a lot of power or a lot of items as you guys saw I, you can produce eight ingots from one ore using different machines um, if you have different you know power inputs I guess but still you still can and yeah that is the mod integration so thanks for watching guys this was a short video uh, mostly be rambling on um, but it was an important topic to cover because you know automation is always good and like uh, always if you like the video please leave a like or subscribe for more minecraft videos thanks again